Welcome to our deep dive into the Angolan men's national team. As their 2024 FIBA Olympic qualifiers campaign is about to begin, let's get to know them a little bit more. Established in 1979, this powerhouse of the African game has a history of unforgettable names of accomplishments. With five Summer Olympic appearances starting in 1992, and nine participations in the FIBA Basketball World Cup since 1986, Angola has showcased its talent on the global stage. Notably, during the 2010 World Cup, Angola took Germany into overtime, knocking them out and advancing into the second round. This was a testament to their skill and determination. On the continental level, Angola's dominance is unmatched. Since 1980, they have secured two bronze, four silvers, and 11 Afro basket golds. They currently hold the record for the longest back to back title wins, that's six between 2001 and 2009. With four African Games golds and another bronze from the 2019 African, there is no doubt that they are the most successful national team in African basketball history. Celebrate the medal and the cup. This remarkable success was built on the foundation of teamwork, consistently made via the regular season, with one example coming from the BAL. In May 2024, Pecho de Luanda clinched their first BAL title. Four players from that roster have been named in a 2024 O2T squad. <laughs> Angona's new generation is ready to lead. With rising stars like Childe Damdao and Bruno Fernando, this team is poised for success. Bruno Fernando embodies passion, power, and resilience, and is a force to be reckoned with. Averaging 4.3 points per game, 3.5 rebounds, and shooting 51.8% from the field, his dominance on the court is unmatched. His career highlights include a double-double with 14 points, 12 rebounds, and a season best of six blocks in just one game. He had his best NBA season so far, and then he's gonna try to take that momentum to the Olympic qualifiers in Valencia because he will wanna show that he's more than capable of being a focal point of the offense, doing more than just setting picks and going for lobs. He has a great mid-range, he can handle the ball, he's a great passer. I'm pretty sure Bruno's gonna have an amazing qualifying tournament. Childe Dundao is, without any doubt, the little big chief of the Angolan national team and the floor general as well. He is especially the player who strikes fear into the hearts of point guards across Africa. His small stature allows him to dart towards every ball, stealing a significant number of them. He is an elite defender. However, to see Dundao only as an excellent defender would be reductive. He has developed into a player with respectable shooting accuracy and has reduced his turnover, which used to be a major flaw. While he still needs to improve his game reading and decision making, Dundao has made significant strides in his leadership. With him, Angola, as a player, we will shine in the upcoming Olympic qualifying tournament. Gilson Bungo, he had two incredible seasons in Germany that um, made him sign a contract with Zaragoza and ACB in Spain. He's a rim runner, rim protector. He, he improved his low post game, so he's going to be able to show that him and Bruno together, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with in Valencia. Hasset Pep Carlos Camals was made head coach in April 2021. Under his leadership, Andona faced significant challenges, but he insists that homegrown talent is the key to a firm foundation. We can sign an import, like most of the national teams, and, and maybe we're going to score more threes, but this is, I don't believe this is correct. Otherwise, in some years, it will be no local product. We need to develop each country need to develop their own players. 
Cameron's strategic mind and experience across multiple continents supports the ball-sharing offense we see today. He focuses on having a disciplined defense, but he knows that his size struggles with positions one and two. We also have to create pointers with size. We have two or three good projects, but still very, very young. As he continues to drive the team forward, the OGTs will be his next opportunity to shine. Their journey in Valencia will be a crucial test as they aim to end a 16-year Olympic drought and re-establish a bonus place amongst the basketball elite. First off, they face Spain at home on the 3rd of July, followed by a matchup against Lebanon, who will be without their star point guard, Wael Arachi. If Angola can secure one victory, they advance to the semi-finals where they could face either a weakened Finland or Panikas Poland. Angola's larger, more athletic front court is a key advantage in these matchups and could do some real damage. The question is, can they come out on top?